In this video, I'm going to show you how we can use Microsoft Forms to create an exam paper uh, with some of the elements of the exam paper self-marking. Now, in this case, we're going to use the AQA Paper 1 from 2018. And this paper contains a range of different question styles from multiple choice, short answers through to longer answers. So to start off with on the form, I have inserted a section. Now what this does is it allows me to capture the student's name, their school email address and their teacher. Okay, you'll notice that each of these has a red asterisk. Now the reason for this, if I just click that, is that this is required. Okay, so the students must complete this before the form can be submitted. So those first three um, sections of the form, if we just have a look in the form itself, we can see this is what the form would look like to the students when it's shared with them. We can see that they can have the name there, the school email, and then their teacher. Okay, if I click next, we can see that the students can't move forward with the paper until that information has been added. So if we just put in some credentials, Okay, if I click next now and we go into the first part of the exam so if we go back to the form uh, I've added a new section here now the reason why I've added a section here is because unlike Google Forms where you can add a header Microsoft Forms does not allow you to do this as you can see I've added a header section a challenge of natural hazards I've then I did uh, a screenshot showing the resource figure one. Now, when I click onto the image, uh, I can, you can see that we've got a series of um, icons here. When you add an image into Microsoft Forms, the standard usually um, inserts the image as a small image. So it's quite useful just to click large and then that increases the size of the resource for the students to use. So our first question here is a multiple choice question. And if I click on that, we can see that um, we've added the question. Here's the possible answers. And then I've selected the correct answer. Now what this does for us is it, when the students submit the exam paper this automatically marks this question for us serving a little bit of time i've allocated one point to the answer as you can see here uh, i've not made it uh, a required answer now the reason for this is that the students may not know the answer and i would encourage the students not to answer the question if they're not too sure and then that way it gives me an indication that they've not had a guess at the answer Okay, if we move on to the next question, describe the movement of plates along plate margin X. You can see here that we've got a series of correct answers that I've included and allocated one mark to the answer. Now, if I click on this, what we can see is that I have added a series of potentially correct answers. Now, if the students write exactly as one of these statements says, it will be automatically marked. If not, um, then I can manually check their response. Okay, uh, and we can add further answers just by clicking the add answer button there. Okay, moving on to our next section. Again, I have added a section here. And within this section, we have included the question and then again we have the uh, figure a quick screenshot and then inserted that as an image here's a series of answers potential answers and in this case we've selected the correct answer okay now if we continue moving down we have uh, an extended answer here as you can see I've clicked long answer for this a uh, question so that it gives us a large answer box for the students to answer into now obviously um, we can't make this self-marking because we're going to end up with uh, a series of different answers or a series of answers written in a different way 
Okay, again, I've allocated the number of points available. Then if we move on to section three, so I've got another section here, and we can see in this section here, we've got the question and then we've got a resource. Now, as I mentioned previously, we want to be making these resources as large as possible so that students can refer to them easily. Now, in this case, um, we've got the image displayed small. So again, click large, then we've got a much larger version of the question, uh, sorry, of the resource. Once more, multiple choice. Uh, in this case, we have not selected the correct answer. Okay, so I know that C is the correct answer to this question. So I just selected that. So that again, the form will automatically mark the correct answer. We've got a one, mark, uh, one point question here, one mark question here. So again, I've included some correct answers. So that if the students write something, um, that's the same as some of these correct answers. Again, it's going to take that hassle of reviewing the individual answer uh, myself. Okay, on this one, um, this question here, um, there are two marks available and the students were asked to give two pieces of evidence. Now, what I've done here uh, is I've split this into two questions, basically. So we've got reason one here and then reason two here. Now, if I click on this, what I could do uh, I could add an answer here and then go through and give a variety of different potential answers that the students give. I uh, could give. And again, we have got another four mark uh, question here. Again, I've added it as a long answer. Now, if we move on to this question here, study figure four, a map showing the track of Hurricane Irma. Now this one displays uh, quite small. Now if I click on this, you can actually see that I have um, already chosen for it to be large. Now the reason why it's being displayed quite small and over here on the right hand side is because when I've taken the screenshot and it's in um, portrait, now because of this, it's not displaying the image particularly well. So that's something to consider when you're taking screenshots uh, or adding resources for students to look at is preferably make them landscape when you capture the image. Okay, so we've got, um, again, uh, we've got a short answer here, two marks available because the answers here could be so very different. Uh, I've not included a mark scheme for this. On this one, uh, we've got a one mark question. Again, I have added some potential answers. You could add more as you're going through marking. If you found uh, a similar statement that students are using, you could then retrospectively add the uh, correct answer here and it will automatically mark the others uh, that have already been submitted. Okay, again, another short um, answer question. We've got a couple of examples here. Uh, then we go on to the big um, nine marker. Now this question here, uh, again, you can see I have created a new section because we've got a new resource being used here. Um, and on this question, I've allocated 12 points. That's because nine marks are issued for the actual answer. And then you've got your three spag marks. Okay. So when you're ready to send that, you can share it with um, with the students. So here we can just copy the address and we can share that link with the students. What you can also do, uh, which is quite useful in Microsoft Forms, is you could share this uh, as a template with colleagues within your department um, should you choose to. And then that allows them to edit the actual form without it having an impact on, on the form that you've created. So you would just simply copy this. Now this form um, this exam paper as a form is available to download from Internet Geography uh, so you can actually see what we've done. If you found this useful give us a thumbs up and it'd be great if you could support us by subscribing to the channel. In our next video we will be looking at how we actually go through and mark student responses to this form.